Hash maps were one of those topics that were pretty confusing to me. Um, even just the name itself, hash map. Like, how am I supposed to know what that does? Well, it turns out that hash maps are nothing more than a list of keys and values, and different keys have different values. This is my hash map Java tutorial. Hey, what is up? It's Alex back again helping you learn Java. On this channel, I make a new Java tutorial that's fresh and new and exciting that you can check out every single week. So if you're new here, then consider subscribing. So let's kick it off by going into our program editor. We'll just go to File New Java Project, call it Hash Map Touch Tutorial, and then open it up, right click on Source, New Class, call it Hash Map Awesomeness. Awesomeness. Public Static Void, hit Finish. Java is really great at storing data. Like we can store integer variables like this, int a equals 10. We can store string variables like this, string b equals hello. And we can store really long lists of data too. So we can have an array of numbers, c, and then set that equal to some list of numbers, one, two, three. And this solves the problem of storing one value into one variable name. a is 10, b is hello. C is a list of one, two, three. But what would we do if we had one million of these variables? Say we had a bunch of integers, like we have another integer B that's three, we have another integer C that's like 88. How could we store A is 10, B is three, C is 88 into one easily accessible place? This is where hash maps come in. The word hash map itself was a little confusing to me. And I honestly don't know why it's called that, but I'm gonna show you what it is and how you can use it. So to store our A, B, and C into a hash map, we would just type hash map with a capital H and M. We'll name it to like happy, because it makes us very happy that we're finally getting to learn what hash maps are. And set that equal to new hash map with parentheses and a semicolon. Hover over the name hash map and click this import hash map java.util. This will auto generate this import statement at the very top and just tells Java to bring in the code for a hash map so we can use it. To put A, B, and C and their corresponding values into happy, we just type the name of the hash map, which is happy. Type a dot to bring up everything that this hash map can do. And this can do quite a bit of things for us, but we're gonna say put and hit enter. It auto-generated some stuff for us, but I'm just gonna delete that. Where key was, I'm gonna put the string a inside of double quotes. And I'm going to put the integer amount 10 into the second one after the comma. And then I'm gonna put a semicolon. Now, inside of happy, there's an a that's equal to 10. I'm gonna do the other ones and then I'm gonna show you more of how it works. So we'll do happy.put b is value three and happy.put c is value 88. You'll notice that there are a lot of yellow underlines here. These first three are just saying that a, b, and c aren't being used, but that's okay. These ones, if you hover over it, it says hash map is a raw type. References to generic type hash map KV should be parameterized. This just means it wants to know the type of the key and the value. What's on the left side of the parentheses is the key or the name. And on the right is what is stored into it. So to tell it what type our values are, we put some uh, less than and greater than sign and then our first one is a string, since it's in double quotes, so we'll say string, and a comma, and the second one is an integer. So we say um, capital integer. It has to be capital integer and not lowercase integer, because this is a primitive type. It turns purple, it's a keyword. And to say the actual type, we have to uppercase it. It's kind of confusing, but this will get it to work for you. Finally, we can just copy this, and put it over on this side. So now it knows that every key is a string and every value is an integer. Let's see that this is working by printing out our hash map. 
we'll do system.out.println and just type the name of our hash map. Save it and run it. And we will see A is equal to 10, B is equal to 3, and C is 88, which is pretty awesome. Everything that we did happy.put has the key on the left, so A, and the value on the right, 10. So if we want to get the value of C, I'm just going to go in here where happy is. I'm going to type a dot, and we can get the value of C by typing get and replace key with C. Save it and run it, and you'll see that it returns 88, which is what we have here. Now let's do another example where we do some more advanced things to our hash map. Let's make it by just typing hash map. We'll name it um, fun and say equals new hash map with our parentheses and semicolon. Now let's do like a user and a password, which are two strings. User is usually a string, password usually a string. And these yellow underlines are saying it wants to know exactly what type. We know that, so we'll just type string, comma, string. And I'll do the same over here. I'll just make this a little wider so you can see more. To add our users and passwords is super easy. We just type the name of our hash map, a dot, and then put. We'll say our first user is um, Bobby Joe. 1996 and the password name is fluffy ponies like that now we'll add another user fun.put hello kitty fan 21 value and put one more the password was like password one two three and print out everything, just typing print out fun, just down with an E, save it, run it, and we get it just like before, except now it's with two strings. You can remove elements from a hash map by typing the name of the hash map dot remove, and then type the name of, in this case, the user. So let's say we want to remove Hello Kitty Fan 21, just copy type that into there, save it and run it. And now you see when we print out everything, that's no longer in fun. The user Hello Kitty Fan 21 and the password are no longer in the hash map. What you can also do is see if a hash map contains a certain value. So you can say fun.contains value and we'll see if it has the value password123 in there. Let's paste that in there, save it, and it returns true if it is in there and false if it's not in there. So in this case it is in there, but if I said password124 then it would be false. Notice how if I do cool guy swag into here and save it and run it, it still brings back false. Because this is saying if fun contains the value, and the values are always on the right. But cool guy swag is on the left. That's actually a key. But we can change this to contains key, save it and run it, and that will return true. This is really useful inside an if statement. So you can say if fun.contains key cool guy swag, then we know the cool guy swag users in there, and we can do different things. You can also get the size and other things like that. So we'll do fun.size and we get three. You can even replace. So say a user changes the password, we could do fun.replace. Um, we'll say Bobby Joe 1996. We'll replace his password with um, better password like that. If we run it and print out fun, you'll see that this first statement, fun.replace, 
returns the old value, fluffy ponies, right here. But when we print out everything, you'll see that Bobby Joe 1996 has his new password. Notice how the order is different. This is the big difference between hash maps and array lists. Hash maps don't really have an order. You can't rely on the specific order of a hash map, only through the keys and values. But in array list, you can get the certain index based on its position. What you can also do is get all of the values, so being uh, fun.values, I'll just delete that last one. We get all the values, and you can do the same with keys by doing key set. Computer science classes really like hash maps because it sort of tests your brain knowledge of how these data structures are working. They're really confusing to me just, just from the name hash map alone, honestly. Um, but they're really not as bad as you think. It's just a long list of things on the left that are set to the thing on the right. And you can access all of them by doing hash map dot what I showed you before. So if you enjoyed this hash map Java tutorial, let me know by leaving a like, and I'll see you all in the next video. Catch you later.